take care of my hair if I have like weird strands like this. Uh, wouldn't that be nice if you had your own hairstylist before every time you get on camera? Um, but anyway, what we're going to be talking about today is the pros and cons of cheap brushes versus more expensive brushes. And ultimately, as it relates for beginners in painting. Now, one thing I will say, I've got a variety of uh, brushes here. So, you know, I've got ones that you can buy at Michael's. You know, you can just buy them. And I would say Michael's does have a good selection of brushes. Um, and then I have a Rosemary & Co. brush, which everyone knows is probably one of the top designing brushes, except for like, you know, some super exclusive brand that sells like a brush for like a hundred bucks or whatever. But Rosemary & Co. is a, you know, one of the industry or standards for high quality brushes. And I have a bunch of brushes that I picked up off, um, you know, Amazon that you could get like, get for like a dollar a piece. And I'm just going to talk about the pros and cons of these brushes. So let's start off with some of the high quality brushes, right? We're just going to start off with one of my best brushes. This is from Rosemary and Co. This is a Rosemary and Co brush, and this is made of badger hair. And it's really hard to tell the texture of it, but hopefully you can see what it's like on the camera here. So it's flexible, but it also maintains its structure. And what you can't really tell from this is that it is pretty dense when you press on it. And it can hold a lot of paint, but it's also delicate enough that it is, um, that it doesn't mess up your painting too much. So there's a lot of versatility of what you can do with this. And this is a longer brush. So usually the more expensive brushes are going to be a bit longer. Um, they're going to be quite a bit longer. And yes, there I do have a bird and she loves to join in on the conversation here. But these uh, more expensive brushes are typically going to be longer handle. And honestly, it feels more like a wand. You feel like you're, you're creating, making an interesting painting like a, like a magician or something or a wizard. Sometimes it can feel that way. So, you know, some people like that feeling of just having a longer brush. And of course, like technique wise, some will say it's better, um, looser, more exciting. And, you know, you just get more of like a painterly feel. But, you know, length of side, uh, the overall quality of this brush, you know, very high. Obviously, it's going to cost more to, to ethically source animal hairs than it is to just, you know, create all these synthetic fibers. So, so far, I've had good use out of these, and as long as you take care of them, they'll keep doing their job. Next up, let's look at some brands that you can get from Michaels. And, you know, some of these brushes can cost just as much as a Rosemary & Co. brush, especially they're really big ones for bigger paintings. Now, this one's a bit stiff right now because I, I just used it for painting the other day. But, you know, once you dip it in oil and once you give it a little bit of a cleaning, it starts to pop right back to its original uh, flexible quality. And from my understanding, I think a, I think that these uh, Princeton Aspen brushes, uh, this is a Filbert, these are designed for oil painting, is that they're designed for oil painting. So I think this is a uh, synthetic fiber. And... Again, if you clean it up, it becomes a lot more flexible than this, but you have to constantly maintain these, but these are still pretty high quality. And what's great is that they're very big brushes. Like, you know, you can see the size difference is almost twice as wide, almost twice as wide, maybe like, let's see, there's, there's one, one, one and a half times as wide pretty much, which means you cover one and a half times more space over the long term. So really great for that, like beginning painting or use, working on big projects and, and capturing the flow and overall design of your painting. The composition. So I've definitely found these. These are a bit more expensive, but obviously they're much bigger. They help for bigger paintings and uh, the quality's there. It's a totally different material. It's not a, a natural hair but still very good and you can get them quickly. So Rosemary & Co, I think it took about a week and a half to receive. Whereas this one, you can just go to the store and get it as you need. And I've had these for quite a while and I put lots and lots of paint on them and use lots and lots of cleaning. So uh, they do a pretty good job. This I would say 
you know, you're really paying more for the size and the sheer size of it rather than necessarily, I mean, the quality of the, the brush is still good, but you're really paying for the size and the need for such a big brush as well as the quality. And then we're going to drop down to, and I would say actually these brushes are, are, are pretty worth it. Um, I wouldn't say they're cheap, but I would say these like are, are mid to high range that you can get quickly and easily from a store. And these are both Princeton as well. So this is a Princeton Velvet Touch. And this is a Princeton something else. I can't remember the name of it, but let's compare the design of these. So this is fairly new. What you'll find about this brush is that it has the flexibility, but it's very dense. And it almost, it has like a very bounce back characteristic. And what I found with these brushes these Princeton brushes is that they hold a lot of paint, but it helps you really do a good job of structuring your painting, of carving out your painting, but you can also lay down paint. So this one's been very good for carving out the, the major structures. So whereas you might use this to like lay down a huge area of paint, you're going to use this for carving out for carving out the exact, um, you know, for really t tuning in on the edges while also laying down paint, right? So if you want to carve around the edges and really structure and create the, the finer details of a fairly large painting, because, you know, this is fairly narrow. I would say that it's about half the size, half the size of our big one. So, but again, this, this, the, uh, the tips here, let's compare this to our rosemary real quick. So our rosemary brush, right, as you can see, I don't know if you could tell, but the fibers are much more delicate, right? These are natural badger hairs. It's still very dense and, you know, it has that bounceability. But for our other Princeton brush, I don't remember exactly what material this is, but as you can see, it bounces back really quickly to its natural position, right? So it's a little bit more stiff and it's got a little bit more density. And this softness doesn't really contribute if you're really trying to carve out hard edges. The softness has its purpose, but this also does a great job of helping you carve, right? If you need to carve. And one thing that is very important when talking about the quality of the brush or, or the price, right? Let's just talk about the price, um, is its reusability. So what I found with the cheaper, cheaper brushes is you get so many for very cheap, but what happens is their reusability is you really have to do a good job of maintaining them. Other otherwise, they get very stiff. So these brushes have done a great job where if you like, if you are to um, clean them almost every single day or after every use, you'll be able to maintain them. So this is another Princeton Velvet brush, as you can see. As you can see, with our Princeton Velvet touch brush it does a great job of maintaining its shape and it can hold a lot of paint so we've explored some of the the uh, more expensive brushes the more expensive brushes as well you know the ones that are very feel very exclusive they're very um, you know high-end to brushes that are still high-end but you can also get them at the store at a store that you can find almost anywhere by the way, someone asked me before what my favorite place to go is. One of them is Michael's. Just because you can see like all sorts of stuff in there. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to brand. I don't actually even know the names of these brands. Oh, here's, here's some of them. But these are much cheaper brushes. These much cheaper brushes. Let's see if I have. Uh, hmm. Try to pull out variety of brushes here. So we're pulling out a range of like cheaper brushes. And this is where you can totally tell the difference. So these brushes are probably like a dollar or two dollars a piece or less. And what you can tell right here is there's a level of stiffness, right? You can tell that it sticks together. And I have cleaned these brushes, but you know, they the shapes aren't there. This is a very stiff brush. Right, you can start to see that the brush is very stiff on some of these lower cost brushes. 
I don't want to say cheap. Cheap's not the right word because you know they're all they all have their, their purpose, right? So this brush has been used for a while. This is a more expensive brush from Princeton. You can see that there is a give to it. That there is a you know an, a, a delicate delicateness, but also being used for its purpose. And the other element of this is is uh, reusability. So I probably maybe used these brushes a few dozen times. And they tend to get stuck really quick because the oil paint uh, gets stuck in them. And of course, maintenance comes as well, but you know, they have their purpose. This is a, uh, a, a, I think this is a natural hairbrush right here, a natural synthetic or something. But you know, this one has maintained some of its shape. These have not. And you'll find that with the, some of the cheaper brushes, like you really have to do a lot of work to maintain them. And if you do, you, they can last for a while, but here's why beginner brushes are and are not good for beginners. So they're good for beginners, obviously because of the price. I mean, you got the price. If you're just beginning, you don't know if you're doing a hobby or you're looking to build a career or whatever, but the beginner brushes are good just for that. You can get tons and tons of brushes and experiment with all sorts of different brushes and get, get a feel for all sorts of different brushes and really experiment. On top of that, there might be some times where you don't really want to buy an expensive brush and you just want something to throw, that you can throw away, right? So that might be a brush that gets a lot of high use out of or a very specific brush that you don't mind just throwing away. Like I heard this is one artist on Instagram named uh, Mark Maggiore. And one thing that he does is he buys like hundreds, he spends hundreds of dollars on really, really fine tip cheap brushes that are like less than a dollar a piece. And he ends up using them. So he ends up using them and then tossing them. So, you know, there's a purpose for all these different brushes, especially exploration as a, as a beginning artist. And, you know, the other thing is with the really expensive brushes, you have to have the, 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 your, your way of maintaining them. So that's the other thing. But the reason why it might be better to invest in a more expensive brush, the one reason why it might be better to invest in a more expensive brush is the idea of reusability. So the one thing about being a beginner is you don't always know how consistent you're gonna be with painting. So if there's a chance that you feel like you're not gonna be consistent with painting, uh, if there's a chance, then the consistency is gonna end up affecting your brushes, right? Like if you're only painting once a week and you forget to, 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 to clean your brushes one week, the cheaper brushes are really good. Like, look, look this has become very, very stiff but if you paint every day and maintain them every day, you could get a lot of use out of them. But what happens is uh, you're gonna end up with brushes that get very stiff and almost, and basically unusable. You have to either, I'm probably gonna, the reason why I even keep these is because I'm probably gonna cut them and shape them into something that I need. But for now, you know, I'm just making a video to share, share an example. So, you know, this, this is some of the problem with the cheaper brushes if, is if you're not using them every single day and maintaining them, uh, there can be an issue. And here's one more thing that happens when you're shopping online is anybody selling these brushes online wants to say that they're for everything, right? But the truth is, like for example, they're gonna say you can use it for acrylic, watercolor, and oil. But the truth is not all brushes work for all of those purposes. Like, yeah, you could use a watercolor brush for oil painting, but it's gonna deteriorate really quickly because of some of the harsher <laughs> properties of oil painting. <coughs> so I don't always know if I can trust uh, what these cheaper brush companies say, but it is a really good way to experiment. And you know, you can get a lot of them for really cheaply. And sometimes you do get some gems like, you know, this is the same brand as some of these, <laughs> the same brand, but the material of it does a great job. I still use this brush all the time, even though I have like, you know, more expensive brushes now. But with that said, these are some, some of the pros and cons of working with uh, cheaper brushes versus more expensive brushes. And they've all got their, their, their uses. So it all depends on how you plan to be, how you plan to structure your work. And with that, hope this video was helpful and have a wonderful day.